time with Herman and Sharon. Okay, let's oh, find it's, out. It's time. Let's find out who. It's time to come out of the let's house. Let's find out who is here today for, for an interview. It is so neat to have you folks join us on a regular basis. The other day, I shared it with you. I was doing my jogging on the beach. Yeah. And coming back, um, I'm walking down the sidewalk, and this lady said, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. So I turned around, and it, what's funny was a clap of lightning had just hit, and I was kind of wanting to He's trying kind, of, to get in the house. kind of move off the beach, head for the house. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I said, yes, and she goes, are you that guy that I used to watch all the time on TV? They took you off our cable. And I go, okay, I said, you live, she lives in those kind of, I said, you live in these condos? She said, yes. I said, well, they determine mm -hmm. who goes on their cable. What channel? Really? Yeah. I said, yes. So I said, I tell you, you can go to YouTube and find us, Herman and Sharon, and you can watch it. Oh, thank you. So off I went. <laughs> but I thought that was kind of interesting that she. And the lightning didn't hit you. No, that, that was That's interesting because, I mean, I don't look like this when I'm jogging. And I, I told her, I said, it's amazing. People can recognize you no matter what you're doing, yeah. what outfit you have on. So it's kind of interesting. That's that, what happens to you when you're on television. Everybody recognizes yeah, you. Shopping malls, yes. shopping centers, they're all over the place. <laughs> we have, there, there's, I don't want to say this because I interview so many people. Yes. But I have. One of your favorites, how's that? Yeah, he would be my top five <laughs> uh, of all time I, I mean this guy is just just fabulous and, and I'm, I'm speaking okay you I, i'm sure many of you out there agree okay but your sister especially in colorado i know i mean she yeah. she can't get enough to it but, but uh before i tell you who it is would you take a look at this clip and then i'll introduce you to our guest franklin delano roosevelt was born January 30th, 1882 in Hyde Park, New York. The 32nd president, Franklin Roosevelt, was in office longer than any other, over 12 years, serving during the Great Depression and World War II. On October 6, 1935, FDR stated, we cannot read the history of our rise and development as a nation without reckoning with the place the Bible has occupied in shaping the advances of the Republic, where we have been the truest and most consistent in obeying its precepts, we have attained the greatest measure of contentment and prosperity. In a fireside chat, March 9th, 1937, FDR stated, I hope that you have reread the Constitution of the United States in these past few weeks. Like the Bible, it ought to be read again and again. In the campaign address, November 1st, 1940, FDR stated, those forces hate democracy and Christianity as two phases of the same civilization. In a radio address, November 4th, 1940, FDR stated, democracy is the birthright of every citizen, the white, the colored, the Protestant, the Catholic, the Jew. In a radio address, May 27, 1941, FDR stated, the Nazis are as ruthless as the communists in their denial of God. Meet in person, William J. Federer. He's a best-selling author. I mean, his books are collectibles. I'm telling you, they're the best. <laughs> They're the only ones I don't. When somebody walks in and says, oh, you got that guy, that Federer guy, I don't go up and go, okay, here's one of his books. Uh, I keep them, but, but he, he is just the best. Uh, nationally known speaker and president of Mara Research, Inc. He is also a founder, uh, a former U.S. congressional candidate. He has a daily radio feature, America Minute, which you just saw a clip, and yeah. popular television program, Faith in history which right. broadcasts nationally. Uh, by the way, the, the, uh, he has been praised by Dr. Ben Carson for right. his tremendous research revealing the true intent of America's founding fathers. Good to have you back. Yes. Hey, Herman. As always. Good to have you, as always. Uh, but uh, this, this book, I, I, 
again, you, you do yourself. I don't know how you do this, but I was reading this book, and, and you folks have got to get a copy. Uh, I, I was never a fan of FDR, okay, just, just you know, be honest, disclosure. Uh, but, but reading this, I go, wow. You know, yeah. once you know the history, which no one gets it in college today, Harvard, uh, you know, wherever they are, Princeton, they're not getting this. But, but it's interesting, but reading this, I mean, and it is just, you wouldn't think reading about a guy that you would not want to put the book down, but I'm telling you, Sharon, yeah. this is really yeah, a great written book. And you please get your copy, because this is, again, every book he's, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we just got just a few up here. Uh, I mean, every book he writes is so well done. They can go to your website and get whichever one yes, they want, yes. right? Yes, but Good. I mean, congratulations on another yeah. great book. Oh, thank you. You, you, you just, yeah, you know, your family I've met, and you've got gorgeous daughters, <laughs> and they're brilliant like their dad. I agree, I agree. It's just, it's just, I mean, God has blessed you tremendously in so many ways, but you're just a, I mean, a guy is brilliant, he just is humble as, as if he, he were a, a guy that drives an 18-wheeler. Well, one of the things I found is that um, history is the memory of the nation. That's what John F. Kennedy said. And if you've ever met someone who's lost their memory, maybe they have Alzheimer's, it's sort of sad. Mm -hmm. um, well, we sort of have national Alzheimer's. So yeah. here we are, the freest country that planet Earth has ever seen, and we yeah. forgot who we are and how we got here. And so that's one of the passions I have for history. As uh, a matter of fact, uh, this book, it's called Prayers and Presidents. I actually read through every address of every past president and excerpted out the references to God, deity, providence from there. Days of pro Thanksgiving, days of prayer, days yes. of fasting yes. and prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's an encyclopedia. When the, when the British burnt the White House, President James Madison had a day of fasting. Uh, when we entered World War I, Woodrow Wilson had a day of fasting. Wow. And, uh, and then, of course, Lincoln had two days of fasting during the Civil War. But the FDR book is interesting, and I had people say, why did you do a book on FDR? Well, I ran for Congress years ago. And, and you almost won. I, I came very close, the, the, yes. the Democrats, which they always pull it, some out of the blue, some kind of a story that they embellish, which was untrue, and literally, you could have met, you could have won. Right, well, it, we definitely had a baptism by fire as yeah. to yeah. how they do politics. But what I found is if I give a quote about God and I'm quoting from Ronald Reagan or somebody that's a Republican, the left's like, ah, that's a, but if I could give a quote about God and I'm quoting John F. Kennedy or Harry S. Truman or Franklin, Franklin D. Roosevelt, yes. Yes. they're like, he said that? Mm -hmm. and so, and so when I read the book, yeah. I'm, I mean, you, you, and you've got them all in the front part and then you start reading through the book and I did just exactly what you said. He said that? You know, one of the quotes, he says, preservation of these rights is vitally important, not only to us who enjoy them, but to the whole future of Christian civilization. I mean, you, you would, yeah. be, it'd be a stretch for a Republican yeah. today to say, oh, we want to preserve Christian civilization. They're like, whoa, you're, not, you're being intolerant toward these other faiths. Yes. But here's FDR yeah. just, you know, 70 years ago saying we want to preserve Christian civilization. Wow. Now, what was the catalyst? I mean, I, uh, uh, you have a prayer plaque, World War II Memorial, Washington D.C. What is that all about? Right. So the World War II Memorial, uh, individuals contributed lots of money. It's a beautiful, beautiful memorial. It's all done. There's not one mention of God on it. And wow. now there's God mentioned four times on the Jefferson Memorial. Uh, there's God mentioned on the Lincoln Memorial. Right. It says both sides read the, read the same Bible, pray to the same God. The prayers both could not be answered. And it says the judgments of the Lord are altogether true and, and righteous. And uh, there's quotes about God on all the other different m memorials, but not on the World War II memorial. Matter of fact, uh, one of the quotes, when the war was beginning, uh, in his D-Day speech, I'm sorry, in this speech on uh, December 7th, uh, FDR said, well, Pearl Harbor's been bombed, and then he said, we will gain the inevitable victory, so help us God. And so they have that quote on the World War II memorial. It says, we will gain the inevitable victory, period. They just happened to leave off, so help us God. So who's responsible for that? Well, it was sort of done during the Clinton administration and uh, the, you know, designers of the, the... Now, you say during the Clinton administration, did they have the word out? 
uh, or did it was it was it implied that this is the way it is? How does somebody key into that? Well, they were called on it and they said, well, we couldn't put all of the, the words of all the quotes, so we had to take excerpts out and they just happened to take excerpts out of anything that referenced God. Okay. So I send out a daily history email, it's called American Minute, and I had the D-Day prayer. And so this is June 6, 1944, where we land several hundred thousand troops on the Normandy coast right. and go to liberate France and then ultimately the, the war. And in his D-Day prayer, uh, FDR mentions God. And so uh, Chris Long of the Ohio Christian Alliance uh, had this idea of approaching his congressman, Bill Johnson, and his Sen U.S. Senator, um, Rob Portman. Why don't we put the Franklin Roosevelt D-Day prayer at the World War II Memorial? He's a Democrat. He was elected uh, four times. He served as president for 12 years only president ever yeah. to do that, especially since we passed the 22nd Amendment, limiting a president yes. to two terms after FDR. So he's a significant president and he gives this prayer and the idea is, well, let's not take excerpts out of it, let's just put the whole thing. And so it, it was def debates on the floor of Congress and speeches and it passed. Right, the Republicans wanted it. Right, it mentions God. Democrats, well, it's FDR, and the windows, the winds of um, you know political opportunity were such that the uh, the immediate past president was uh, catching some unfavorable press on certain things, and so um, he went ahead and signed it, and so it got approved. And uh, but it needs to be paid for by private donations oh, because okay. it is a prayer after so all. So they need about a half a million, isn't it? Yes, and uh, and there there is a time deadline. And so uh, if they don't get the money and get it built uh, within a certain period of time, the legislation runs out and they would have to repass it all. And with the current Congress, there's a good chance that it probably would not pass. And if this president moves on, it's over. Yes. And so this is, there is a window of time to get this done. And so if there's any individuals uh, watching that care to uh, put the Franklin Roosevelt uh, D-Day prayer well, together there at the World War II Memorial. Uh, the website is ddayprayerproject.org. Say that again. ddayprayerproject.org. So a donation goes there. Right, and, and then they- and it's passed on. Then they raise the money to get the, uh, they're gonna have four uh, plaques, you know, granite, and uh, they're gonna have the, the whole prayer. Here's a little excerpt from the prayer. And so this is Franklin Roosevelt, uh, he's announcing to the nation that we are entering World War II mm -hmm. and that we are having hundreds of thousands. It's the largest um, land sea invasion in world history and probably the largest that will ever be because with satellites uh, nowadays, you can see the amassing of such, you know, thousands of ships and thousands of planes yeah. back then they didn't know and so we were sending signals that maybe we were going to land somewhere else uh, they would um, have uh, all kinds of operations where they'd have you know looked like plans that were lost but they were lost intentionally so the nazis would get them and think hey they're gonna they're gonna land over here yeah. there were even some where we had uh, blow up tanks they literally had designed these uh, so that they would place them and fake tanks, fake yeah. tanks, yeah. so they could fly over the plane and they would look like real tanks. And then they set up speakers in the woods and would turn on sound of ta you know tank movements and truck movements and things clanking, you know. So they would be like, ah, I can hear something. What general was this? Well, uh, uh, Patton was one of them. Okay, he was not there at D-Day yeah. and he was uh, in another area of Europe and so they thought well maybe he's going to be involved and, yeah. and, and so um, the, uh, the prayer that Franklin Roosevelt gave it says I ask you to join me in prayer again this is a hundred million people listening uh, Almighty God our sons pride of our nation this day have set upon a mighty endeavor a struggle to preserve our republic our religion and our civilization and you think, republic, what's that? That's where the people are king ruling through representatives, right? That's so, what we are, right? That's right, we're America a republic. So if we can keep it. If yeah. we can keep it. And so uh, 
Hitler was the head of the National Socialist Workers' Party. So socialism is a dictatorship form of government. It's a pyramid structure to society where everybody's life is determined by the government and the government ends up with some political boss at the top. And so it's a pyramid structure very similar to a king mm -hmm. uh, where you have Nimrods and Pharaohs and Caesars and Kaisers and Sultans. Um, uh, Stalin was the head of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. He was a dictator. So wherever you have a socialist country, you have a dictator and you have the elite deep state party class that runs everything, and then the people's lives are all controlled by the government. And so uh, a republic is flip. Instead of it being your life controlled from top down, it's bottom up. Mm -hmm. So a republic is where the people are the king, and they choose representatives to do the political stuff. And so we pledge allegiance to the flag and to the republic. We're basically pledging allegiance to us being in charge of ourselves. Yes. And so when somebody protests the flag, what they're saying is, I don't want to be the king anymore. I protest this system where I participate in ruling, right? So kings have subjects who are subjected to their will. A republic uh, has citizens, and the word citizen means co-king, right? So if you travel another country, you come back to America, and you see the immigration says the U.S. citizens go this way, they, they could put U.S. co-kings go this way. <laughs> we're co-kings we're co of America. Anyway. So he says, we've struggled to preserve our republic, our religion. So here's FDR saying, this is a struggle to preserve our religion. What religion is he talking about? Well, he passed out Gideon's New Testament and Book of Psalms wow. to all the soldiers in World War II. Wow, that's great. Blue ones to the Navy, brown ones to the Army. He even writes the foreword to it. It says, uh, January 1941, as commander in chief, I take pleasure in commending the reading of the Bible to wow. all who serve in the armed forces of the United States. This is FDR. This is FDR. And, wow. uh, and of course, Woodrow Wilson passed out New Testaments to all the soldiers in World War I and so forth. But, but here's FDR. And, um, but he goes on in his prayer uh, to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization. This is the Judeo Christian civilization where you are all equal because you're made in the image of God. Right. Islam doesn't have that. Islam has kafir infidels are not equal to believing Muslims. Yeah. Women are not equal to men. Communists. So where would you place, if the Muslims took over America, what would it look like? Well, it would look like the 14 centuries of other countries where they relegate non-Muslims to a second class status called dhimmi, D-H-I-M-M-I. And what does that mean? That means you can't say anything that insults a Muslim. If you do, it's the death penalty. Um, that uh, you have to ransom your life once a year, right? They call it a jizya tax. And so the, the Christians have to pay a tax. Otherwise, they're not part of the agreement and they could be killed or raped and so forth. And, um, uh, but then it's very similar to in America during the reconstruction era after the Civil War the Democrats in the Deep South passed Jim Crow laws and black codes and started the KKK. The Democrats. Right, so Lincoln, Republican, freed the slaves. Um, there was about four or 5,000 lynchings that took place. The Democrats. <laughs> right, and, and about, about a fourth of all the lynchings were white Republicans down in the South registering the blacks to vote. What? Right, so, so you have the, the lynchings of black people, yeah. a horrible crime that took mm -hmm. place, but uh, there's about 4,000 acknowledged registered, the Tuskegee Institute you know, went through all the records, and, but about a fourth of all the lynchings were what they called radical Republicans. They were white northern Isn't Republicans amazing? going this, to the this south, is not heard of. registering the, the freed blacks to vote, and so the Democrats didn't like them. And this was in a Christian nation going on, right. so-called. And so you had um, <laughs> Republicans push through the 13th Amendment ending slavery, 14th Amendment. But it's amazing, isn't it, that the Republicans are branded. Yeah. Everything you just said is an R instead of a D. Right. So, so you look at the history. Um, Teddy Roosevelt, Republican, was the first president to have a black man in the White House for dinner. It was Booker T. Washington. Uh, you had Democrat. Woodrow Wilson segregate the military and segregate all the federal offices of the blacks on a one Democrat. side. A Democrat. You had Republican Eisenhower integrate the military and then Republican President Eisenhower sends the federal troops to the south to force Democrat George Wallace to integrate the schools. A Republican. A Republican I remember that. Right? 
And you had uh, Democrat Strom Thurmond and Senator Byrd filibustering civil rights bills that Republicans were pushing through. And it wasn't till uh, Lyndon Johnson came along and he did the big switch from intimidation to entitlement. So with the ah. advent of television, it looked really bad that the Democrats were hosing blacks down on the street and sicking dogs on them. And so he said, we have to stop using tactics that look bad. Let's switch from intimidation to entitlement. And so he started the Great Society Welfare State. And it was this push to get as many minorities to sign up for welfare as possible. So uh, then you're beholding. Right. And so you think of the the phenomenon. If you were getting a thousand dollar check in the mail every week from someone you did not know, week after week, month after month, thousand dollars, thousand dollars, thousand dollars, after a few years of this, would you ask yourself, who is sending me this thousand dollar check every week? I'm going to find out who they are and vote them out of office. No would, way. Would anybody do it? No way. I'd even say, oh, I got a couple yeah. more bills to pay. Yeah. Let it come a little yeah. longer. <laughs> Once you get people to receive free money from you, they will have the strongest motivation to want to keep you in office. Mm -hmm. And so the Great Society Welfare State was a way to build a Democrat voter base, a dependency. And then uh, LBJ also changed the immigration quotas. Prior to 1965 LBJ, most immigrants came from Europe. And they had a Judeo-Christian work ethic where it was almost a sign of failure to receive a welfare handout. And you would have families like in the Appalachian Mountains where they would starve rather than taking a government handout. But finally, the government realized if they said, well, look, bring a cabbage, which grow pretty easily yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Bring a cabbage and we'll give you money in exchange, right? So they had to give something, even though they were throwing the cabbages in a ditch in the backyard. The people, their uh, psyche, their ethic, they couldn't yeah. take a free handout because it was right. a sign of failure. Mm -hmm. Well, LBJ realized that immigrants from poorer third world countries had no problem taking a handout. And so he changed the immigration quotas in 1965 to get less immigrants from Europe, more immigrants from third world countries, and they would sign up for these welfare Great Society benefits and they would end up becoming Democrat voters. So these were tactics to build the Democrat voter base. And no walls anymore, no boundaries, no borders, that's what they're after today. So that they can have a greater population voting Democrat, they can forever be in office. Yeah, it's, a, it's sort of interesting when you actually don't pay attention to the rhetoric, but look at the application. Right. Uh, so if you let a lot of illegal immigrants into a city and they camp out with homelessness uh, and crime goes up, what happens? Well, people with families and people with financial means begin to move out of the city, and a higher percentage of those are Republicans, conservatives. Well, who's left in the city? A higher percentage of those on government handouts, which tend to be Democrat. And so if they can win the city, they win the state, mm -hmm. right? So you got Illinois. Chicago will wait until all the rest of the state reports, and then they'll go over and win with enough Democrat votes, you know, the dead people voting and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so most of the voter fraud takes place in these big cities right. with these political machines. Mm -hmm. And so if they win the city, they win the state, they get all the electoral votes for the state, and the president is elected by electoral votes. So they actually have a political strategy to have homelessness and crime go up in the city on purpose, to have those that move out that tend to be more Republicans, and so they get a monopoly on the city, then they get all the state votes, and then they get all the electoral votes for the state, and they can determine who the next president's gonna be. My goodness. Yeah. And, and it is, what you just gave mm -hmm. is not hypothetical. It's what's happening today. Right. And, and then, even if, they, uh, even if they don't vote, uh, they are counted in the census. And the congressional districts are divvied up based on the census. So uh, it used to be one congressman for every 30,000 people, but they changed it. And so in 1911, they said, look, let's just do a census every 10 years and take the country and divide it by the 435 congressional seats. And so sometimes you'll have a state that loses population, uh, and that uh, loses a congressman. A con they lose a congressional district. But states like California will get 53, 55 <laughs> congressional seats, and then they, uh, the electoral votes are divided up based on those electoral seats. 
and so they get more more seats in Congress, more electoral votes. Um, so again, so another, that's why they don't want the citizenship question on the correct. census coming up right, right now. Right, right, because then they get counted, and then they get more more congressmen, more congressional districts, more electoral right, votes. Right. So there's a political purpose behind it. I, mm -hmm. I would put forth the question: If every illegal immigrant was going to vote for President Trump, would the Democrats fight so hard to let them in? No way. No, That's an interesting be, question. There would be there would be crime in the streets. <laughs> Every window in every business would be broken if that were to take place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so anyway, um, so uh, back to FDR. He says, "Okay, uh, prayer. We're announcing the invasion at D-Day. A struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization. This Judeo-Christian civilization where you have rights from God, not from the state." Uh, so, uh, uh, Eisenhower said. Our founders had to refer to the creator to make the re their revolutionary experiment make sense. Wow. And um, anyway, but he goes on, he says, give strength to their arms, um, stoutness to their hearts. Uh, and then he says, the enemy is strong. He, will, uh, he may hurl back our forces. We know that by thy grace and thy righteousness of our, the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. And then he says, some will never return. Embrace them, Father, and receive them, thy heroic servants, into thy kingdom. And so it's a Christian prayer. FDR was Episcopalian. Yes. Uh, he always uh, had a, a minister come and give a, a, a prayer service before his inauguration, the, the four different times. And, um, uh, and then again, he would uh, give addresses, like I, I put in the book, at the 400th anniversary of the printing of the English Bible. Uh, so it was, uh, there was a Bible printed in 1535, and so he had, you know, 1935. And so he says, we cannot trace the history of our rise and development as wow. a nation without reckoning the place the Bible has occupied in the advances If the people the want Republic. to give for that plaque, can they get the information from your website then? Um, well, I, for the plaque, I would recommend ddayprayerproject.org. Okay. Please make note of that because this is very important that we get recognition of our God when all of America walks by these areas and reads the plaques yeah. God's name should be on there Absolutely. as a prominent name spend time in the Word of God you just heard one of the presidents which was a total uh, I mean I, I, I knew he was uh, a phenomenal guy because you don't get four times as president, unless you're amazing, but I never knew his depth, and get his book. It is absolutely uh, a page turner. Read the Word of God today. God bless. Bye bye.